Hi guys, it's Sebastian with Smelling Great Fragrance Reviews. I'm here in Madrid, Spain at Oliver & Co's new perfume shop. We are going to do an overview of the brand with Oliver, the owner of the brand himself. Plus we're going to have a giveaway all coming right up. Hello, I'm Oliver Valverde, founder of Oliver Co. Uh, this is my store. Uh, it was open last month, so now I will give you a tour. Uh, you can discover my creations of all my universe. So please come in. Thank you for coming to, to my store in Madrid, in the center of Madrid. So the store was open uh, one month ago, the 30th of November. Um, well, well, as you can see, the store is dark, it's very dark, it's, everything is painted in black. And um, even the furniture is also black. The idea to paint in this color was because uh, I think black is the sum of all the colors. At the same time, uh, it makes uh, more intimacy to discover fragrance without uh, too much light. So I want the, 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 every visitor that comes to the store discover the brand and focus on the smell, the sense of smell and the sense of vision but more smell so that's why everything here is uh, dark it's also because uh, my background I was a DJ and I studied some engineering uh, so I love techno music, electronic music and the idea with the, the black is, was also to trying to get uh, the feeling like if you are in a techno club at the same time if you are in a moonlit garden so I think that's uh, the point why everything is black. A short introduction to the brand to understand this. I decided to put uh, to name it the avant-garde per perfumery rather than niche. I think uh, avant-garde is exactly what I do. It's like I don't follow the rules. I don't uh, try to make something that is already invented. So I always try to make my own path in perfumery. What I offer is fragrances that are completely different in the way they are made because I didn't study it. So due to the fact that I'm avant-garde, I'm, I'm self-taught perfumer. I never went to perfumery school, so that's why when you smell it, you see that there is no standards of perfumery. There is no rules, there is no olfactory families, there is no pyramid. The notes are given to the customer in alphabetical order. Uh, and I think also the connection between illustrations, the connection between uh, the space, the outer space to frame is something that is uh, it was not explored, so I always like to explore like uh, new territories. Now I will show you illustrated series. This collection uh, is um, the inspiration. is uh, is not uh, the idea to translate uh, a souvenir or a story from the past, you know, into a fragrance. It, it's more like uh, experimenting in present time. With this collection, I kind of start to create a fragrance with the discovery of one single ingredient or just uh, play with two words that are usually two ingredients and sometimes I smell uh, a new molecule and this uh, gives me all the energy to start a formula. So there is no uh, real uh, narrative. I started with candles. After one year of selling the candles, I decided to make fragrance. So <laughs> the first one is, was mousse. Mousse, it comes from the mousse de chien, which is the oak moss in, in English. I remember that it was because I discovered uh, my first two ingredients, that I, the first two ingredients that I smelled was uh, oak moss and iso super. Uh, and then in that moment, uh, I decided to, to make fragrance, you know, it was, uh, for me it was uh, like a child with a new toy, you know, when you give uh, a new toy for the first time. Um, you see that uh, you are like a bit open, like a lot of possibilities to, to play, you know, to do things in your life. And I think I had that feeling of uh, discovery for the first time the, the world of perfumery. And the fact that I'm not uh, um, a formal trained perfumer, I'm uh, up to do that, sort of. So, you know, I have this kind of feeling like, uh, okay, I want to do this in my life. Um, was mousse, it was the first creation and uh, these two ingredients uh, uh, give me all the energy uh, to start with the brand. Now it's, uh, it's still uh, one of the most popular seller of the brand it's, and it's nice because uh, the formula is very simple, there are not too many ingredients, at this time I didn't have too much skills you know, to blend because I was uh, 
start, but at the same time the smell is very complex. So I think that's why it's uh, quite popular. The most popular now since the last year is Amber Green. I think it's because it's very, it's very unusual and avant-garde composition. But uh, I think also it helps because uh, it won the award of Best Artistic Independent Perfume in, the, in Germany, in the, the Dufe Star for 2017. I think it worked the, uh, as well because, uh, you know, for people who like green fragrance and for people who like very intense and very long-lasting fragrance, you have everything of this in amber green. Uh, it's super green, it's fresh, it's uh, ethereal, it's light, it's very uh, easy work but at the same time it's very long-lasting, intense, strong. I think it's one of the reasons why it's, uh, it's very popular. It's, uh, because it's very unusual and it's, uh, of course it's a fragrance that makes you feel good you know, during the day. When you spray yourself, when you go to war, um, when you go to a party you know, and you spray amber green, you have this kind of uh, blast, a blast of green energy. Um, yeah, I think that's the reason why it's so popular. Uh, all the ingredients in amber green, uh, the, the name it comes also from the, the fusion of uh, green notes, an explosion, uh, a green bomb of all the things that is uh, green, like green pepper, coriander, shiso, uh, basil, um, uh, freshly cut grass, you know, all that uh, thing that we, I mean, all the green uh, ingredients that are uh, available in perfumery, the, the strongest one. Um, at the same time, it has an uh, amber grease, not amber like uh, the oriental amber, more like the amber grease, more like uh, in a dry, velvety direction. So I use a few molecules to, uh, to try to give uh, all the green notes uh, like an explosion, you know, because the green are very light and you have to, if you want to make them stronger, you have to put something in the base, you know, even if I don't work with, uh, with pyramids, but uh, you hear, you feel that the, uh, all the notes, the green notes, are, I mean, last till the end of the day. It's not that they are coming uh, on the first spray and then they're gone and then the amber is there. So I think it's, uh, yeah, it's quite an unusual composition. Uh, I think you should smell, you should discover. I think uh, Betty Virus, it can be most masculine according to the standards of perfumery but I really don't follow the standards and I, all my friends are unisex even I never think of gender when I'm creating fragrance I just think of fragrance so uh, for everybody for you know uh, there is no any marketing um, study you know before I create but I think according to what is established in the market uh, vetiverus it can be this it's very uh, strong it's uh, it bases on vetiver from IT of Mantus Absolute so you see the vetiver is a very masculine ingredient but here uh, vetiver I, I take it on a new identity on a new on a new direction for people who like vetiver maybe vetiverus is uh, a good because it's a, a new discovery, it's a new direction combined to the uh, classical vetiver smell. There is also something new in vetiver that is uh, because of the Osmanthus flower absolute. You see that uh, Osmanthus has a very special smell because it doesn't smell like a flower really. It's more like a dried apricots, a little bit like a lactonic, a little bit like leathery and super strong. So here, these two ingredients makes vetiver uh, in a completely new direction. And I think it's quite, um, it's quite uh, erotic, it's quite dark. It can be masculine, but I also am surprised that many women wearing this, and because they like to feel like this. Probably it's the strongest fragrance from the, from, from the brand. It's, um, and it's not for everybody, of course. It's for people who like uh, or heavy and oriental, sorry, yeah. I don't work with uh, families, with olfactory families, it's a nice question. But I think uh, for good man, good, good man, sorry, it's, um, I can say Vaniger, or Vaniger. Vaniger, well, as you can see and you can guess for the name, is vanilla with ginger. But think about vanilla, uh, it's like vetiverse. Vanilla in a completely new direction. I use the real vanilla absolute. Here, a lot of quantity, you know, it's not uh, a common ingredient. Um, but here you have a, a gourmet that is not sweet and is not so spicy at the same time. So you should smell it because you have, from one side, you have the sweetness of vanilla, absolute, which is also very balsamic. 
and from the other side you have uh, the fresh ginger oil which is a very sharp, spicy, very citrusy smell. Uh, so these two ingredients together give vanilla a, a new identity to, uh, to the vanilla absolute. And you have also uh, jasmine with the molecule adium which is very airy and radiant and heliotrope. So it's a gourmand of course but uh, it's more, I think it's more than this. The gourmand are quite uh, linear in general. I think if you want to do a gourmand, you choose uh, a group of ingredients. And I, I did uh, vanilla without choosing really the ingredient intentionally. So the result is quite um, unusual, I think. And uh, everybody likes it because these days some people say that it's like uh, ice cream, but, uh, but super good quality ice cream, I don't know what to say when they, when they tell me this. And some people also say that they, it's like a, something that you want to fluff it, you know? Something that you want to hold and hug, you know, and cut it. So I think from this collection, the, the most challenging fragrance is Resina, which is uh, I created intentionally without, uh, I mean, the inspiration was clear. I, w I wanted to make a fragrance based on resins, almost all the resins available in perfumery. And you know, the resins are so heavy, so dense, very like for base note, you know, to hold, to keep the, the fragrance. And what I did here is to create the intention uh, during the process, the creative process, the intention was to create a resin smell that is the sum of the all, of all the ingredients that, that they use for the formula. So think about all the resin in perfumery, available for perfumery, plus a touch of uh, jasmine sambac, um, fresh ginger and star anise. Also a very unusual ingredient in perfumery which is the flame tree essential oil or fire tree essential oil from Australia which has a very resin, balsamic, flowery, plastic, uh, a little bit like leather smell. It's quite 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 unusual and here I use in a lot of uh, in a, like a big dose of this, a heavy dose. So I think uh, yeah, it was the most challenging because it's, uh, it was different, it, it was difficult to bring all the resin in the first stage, you know, because the resin usually go down when you put in a formula, so I, it was quite difficult to do it. I have another collection, uh, which is Nebula Series. Nebula Series is uh, completely different from Illustrated Series. The idea to create this collection, it comes, I had a book of, uh, of the cosmos, and I start to read, you know, and see all the, the pictures, the, the photograph of the Nebula. And then suddenly I was looking to the uh, Nebula Oreo, you know, Oreo Nebula from the Hubble Telescope, which is something really an astronomical wonder. It is something that super uh, weird, you know, it's like uh, beautiful. So when I uh, see that pictures, it produces something, you know, it, it makes me feel like uh, somehow uh, connected to perfumery. At this time I was exploring uh, new ingredients, you know, new fragrance. It was suddenly, in less than one minute, I think, I, I say myself, okay, I need to do something with this. The next day, I I had the idea to uh, with synesthesia. You know, what I did is to translate all the colors and texture of the nebula into real ingredients or olfactory notes to make impression of something that is like a red, hot, vibrant, spicy, but at the same time something that is like pure white. Uh, something that is like uh, dark, metallic. It was a very difficult process, but um, the collection is quite uh, futuristic and it's, uh, I think it's, uh, it's uh, I did because I really like to explore new territories in perfumery. I don't uh, really uh, get used to uh, be well and be uh, comfortable with the standards. So I always want to do something different. Here, for example, you have, uh, the first one was Nebula 1, which is based on the Nebula Oreo. And the second is Nebula 2, which is uh, based on Nebula Carina, which is, uh, is, they are completely different from each other. So you have a uh, Nebula 1 Oreo, it's super floral, fruity, animalic, uh, a little bit like uh, aldehyde. And at the same time, it's quite uh, weird because this smell like uh, something like uh, from the space, really. So I, uh, what I did with this collection is to put all the ingredients in the same level. I didn't want to put uh, 
uh, an evolution, you know, the frema. It was uh, the idea was to create like an amalgam of uh, ingredients that they are, they are all spray at once. So what you smell when you smell it the first time is my uh, my interpretation of this image. So that's why everything go in the in the first spray. But uh, if you smell a few minutes after you have something different and um, if you smell uh, one second after you have the same smell so it's like it's moving but at the same time it's quiet and the uh, and nebula too is quite um, different it's blue emerald green uh, it has something metallic there is also a, a mineral notes and uh, a very musky herbal green citrus uh, but the first impression can be like uh, herbal, mineral and metallic. Nebula 2 is the most popular from this collection, the best seller actually from this. I'm planning also Nebula 3 in March this year, because uh, that collection is quite uh, complex, it's quite, uh, honestly, it's quite difficult to sell it, but I think what I want to do with this is to, is, here for example, is more like a my most uh, independent or underground playground. So it's where I explore the most crazy ideas that I have, combining ingredients. I think it's, uh, it's, it's nice to have this collection. I think every two years I will try to add one nebula. Thanks so much for watching this overview video for Oliver & Co. perfumes. If you have any questions or comments, please list below. Have you ever tried Oliver & Co. perfumes? Which, are, which is your favorite Oliver & Co. perfumes? Let me know. And also, which fragrance sounds great to you? And to participate in a giveaway for one free bottle of Oliver & Co. perfume of your choice that Oliver discussed in the video, all you have to do is put a comment down below. Let me know which fragrance sounds the best to you. Please put down the name. And also, please put down your country. This is a worldwide giveaway. We'll run the randomizer and select the first person on the list to win their own choice of Oliver & Co. perfume. Also, for seven days, if you decide to buy a fragrance from the Oliver & Co. website, uh, with any purchase you get a Betaveris soap for free. And this will be available for 7 days from when the video airs. Alright guys, thanks so much for watching this video. Please like this video, please share it, follow me on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram, and I'll be back with more videos very soon. Have a good one. Goodbye.